Good evening, welcome to GBC at home. What is church? It's a word we use every week. We go to church, we do church, and we are church. But what exactly, biblically, is church? During, the, during this course, we aim to raise some of these questions and hopefully inspire more questions about church. All the time being Berean and taking everything that's said back to the scriptures. This course is going to look at four main areas that are linked to the idea of church. Firstly, we're going to be asking, does what we do matter to God? Secondly, we'll have a look at biblical church leadership, particularly Christ as the head of the church. Then we look at what it means to be a biblical church member. And finally, we will look at the idea of church growth. At the end of this collection of studies, we'll have a look at prayer. And we'll have a dedicated time praying for Christ's church. Each session will present you with a short video of no more than 15 minutes in length. And then you'll be invited to discuss the video in your groups, whether that's at home, with your home group, with your family or on Zoom. So let's start. The word church doesn't appear in the original scriptures, but rather the word ecclesia, which means an assembly. The word was commonplace and has no special religious meaning other than to mark out church as an assembly of believers. It is something we see over and over again in scripture that church can't be done on your own. Now the New Testament uses a lot of metaphors to describe church. At some points it's called family, vine, bride, and most of these imagery are steeped in Old Testament. But one is different. There's one that is exclusively New Testament, and is that we are the body of Christ. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though we are many, are one body, and individually members of one another. Romans 12, 4 to 5. We who are many are one body. 1 Corinthians 10, 17. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body Though many are one, so it is with Christ, 1 Corinthians 12, 12, and 1 Corinthians 12, 27. You are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Ephesians 4, 12, equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its saviour, Ephesians 5, 23. Colossians 1, 24, in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is the church. And it's with this sense of body and unity that Paul writes to the church in Corinth. And in Corinthians, he tells them that the church should be holy, united, loving, ordered, pure and serving. As one observer wrote, the church should be Christ-like and Christ-following. If we think of ourselves as the body of Christ, how does that change the way we interact with each other? How does that shape the way we do church? The concept of being a body is something we will return to over and over again, as it should influence our, our thoughts and how we serve. We are cells with a purpose in one body, with Christ as the headship. The metaphor of being a body of Christ helps us to look at the parad paradigm shift in the New Testament. The church age marks a fundamental shift. At the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, the author starts with the birth of Christ, and people are arriving like magi to come and see his birth. This is the normal for the Old Testament. Come see. By the end of Matthew, and in the books of Acts, there has been a fundamental change to the attitude shown. Jesus commands his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. And in Acts we see Jesus prophesy that the disciples would be witnesses to him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the rest of the world. Just looking at the beginning and the end of the book of Acts, we can see it starts in Jerusalem and ends with Paul in Rome. With the dawn of the church age, the mission changed from come see the tabernacle, come see the temple, come see our God, to go tell and go tell everyone about Christ Jesus. We see in Paul's letter to the Corinthians the importance of our ecclesiology. It should be formed by our theology and it should be lived out. The things we see and we believe should be manifested in the church 
and the things that are manifested in the church are what we really believe. So let's stop for a few moments and ask from the things that we do, what's important to our church? Here's a little tip for you. If you want to know what the heart of a church is, listen to the prayers. So pause now, take some time to look at our church. When we return, we look at the purpose of church. Welcome back. So what is the purpose of church? For the next few minutes, I want you to discuss what you think the purpose of church is. And I'd like you to have a look at these four scriptures. 1 Peter 2, 9, Ephesians 4, 11 to 13, and joined to that one is 1 Corinthians 14, 26, and Matthew 28, 16 to 20. Have a look at these and see what you think the purpose of church is. Welcome back. I hope you found that time useful. It's often said that the church is the gospel made visible. And if that's the case, I think there are three areas for a church. There's worship, discipleship, and evangelism. All of other parts of church life can in some way or other fall into one of these three categories. Now it might be that as you were studying, you came up with other categories and I would really love to hear them. So please drop a comment, send a message, let us know what you think are the other categories. So now that we're looking at these three categories, worship, discipleship and evangelism, where do you think we're doing well as a church? And what area could we improve? So the next exercise, I want some blue sky thinking. Nothing's off limits. What ways can we improve our worship, discipleship and evangelism? And importantly, how can you help? So now imagine you're planting a church. What ministries would you run? How would that church worship, disciple and evangelise to the glory of God? When we come back, we'll wrap things up and we'll look to next week. Welcome back. Next week, we will talk about worship and whether God is concerned with how we worship him. And we'll be asking in our church, are there any golden calves? So get ahead, read a bit on Exodus about Moses at Mount Sinai, the Ten Commandments and how the Israelites reacted. And during this week, keep thinking about our church. What do we do well? What can we improve? Worship, discipleship and evangelism, the hallmarks of a church. So until next week, grace and peace be with you.